Hey guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use PowerShell to convert to and from the JSON format. JSON, or JavaScript Object Notation, as you most likely know, is a common serialization format that's used to communicate data between different applications. In this particular demonstration, I'm going to be using the Microsoft Visual Studio Code editor on the Microsoft Windows 10 platform, but you should be able to follow along using Visual Studio Code on Mac or Linux because it's a cross-platform editor and also because PowerShell Core runs as a cross-platform automation framework. So the first thing we're going to take a look at how to do is to convert a PowerShell object to JSON. So in this example, I'm going to use the new CFN stack command to deploy a CloudFormation stack to the Amazon Web Services Cloud. I'm going to specify the region that I want to deploy the CloudFormation stack to, and then I'm going to specify the stack name, just Trevor Test. Now, in order to deploy a CloudFormation stack using JSON, I need to specify the template body parameter. So the template body, as you can see here, is a string parameter that accepts JSON or YAML. But since we're talking about JSON, we're going to we're going to go ahead and create an example that uses JSON instead of YAML. So normally what you could do here is create a here string in PowerShell, which is a multi-line string, and start manually crafting your JSON. At the root of our JSON object, we have resources, which is an object in itself, and then it create and then you create your individual resources, your cloud resources as child members of the resources property. So let's create an S3 bucket and it's going to have a type property, and it's going to be set to AWS S3 bucket, separated by double colons. So this should be valid JSON that allows me to deploy an S3 bucket. Let's test it out by hitting F5. Sure enough, it passes validation, and we can see that we've successfully deployed a new CloudFormation stack using this Amazon resource name, or ARN. Now, you probably don't want to be habitually crafting JSON by hand. So what's an easier way that we can accomplish this same thing without having to write JSON inside of this ugly here string? Well, what we can do instead is create what's called a PowerShell hash table. So PowerShell hash tables and arrays allow you to create the basic constructs of a JSON document, but do it in PowerShell syntax instead. Once you create that hierarchy, of object data, you're then going to pass that into the convert to JSON command that's built into PowerShell in order to convert the hierarchy of data into a JSON string. Let's take a look at how this would work. So I'm going to create a variable called CFN template, and I'm going to create a PowerShell hash table. A hash table is created by using the at sign open close curly brace. Now the hash table is just a dictionary or key value pair just like most other languages offer. And the very first element we're going to add to this hash table is called resources. Now, resources is a child object, so we're going to specify a hash table as the object belonging to the resources property. Next, we're going to use the, we're going to specify the resource logical name, which in this case is going to be my S3 bucket. And that itself is also a child object. So the my S3 bucket is going to have a type property of AWS S3 bucket. So this looks a little bit cleaner than the JSON that we had to handwrite with all the extra double quotes and so on. So let's go ahead and take this CFN template variable and inspect it. So we're just going to select this code here and then hit F8. And as you can see, we just get our hash table returned to us. So now let's convert it to an actual JSON string. So PowerShell has this built-in command called convert to JSON. Let's go ahead and just pipe that hash table into it. Let's actually put this on a new line here and then pipe it into the convert to JSON command. Now, as you can see, we get valid JSON returned to us here. Now, what if we go one level deeper? So let's add the properties property to the S3 bucket and then we'll create a child hash table there. So let's add a property called access control, and then we'll set that to private to indicate that the S3 bucket should be private. Let's go ahead and rerun this to see what happens. Now, see what happened here is there's a properties property 
on the MyS3 bucket object, and the value of it is system.collections.hash table. So that doesn't match the access control equals private that we expected, right? So why did this happen? Well, if you inspect the documents documentation for the convert to JSON command by running get help dash name convert to JSON dash parameter depth, you'll notice that the default property value of the depth parameter, or sorry, parameter value of the depth parameter is two, right? So basically what this is saying is that by default, PowerShell is only going to go two levels deep beneath the root of the object, and it's going to basically consolidate anything else that's two, that's more than two levels deep, and it's going to call the toString method on whatever that object is, and then just represent that as the string representation of the object. So this properties property contains a hash table. So what PowerShell did is it called the toString method on this hash table, and then it passed it back to the properties property. So that's why we get system.collections.hash table. So how do we work around this? Well, what we can do is simply specify the depth parameter on the convert to JSON command, and then specify a depth that goes deeper to the point where we need it. So we only have three levels of depth here because it worked with a depth of two, and we added one more level of depth after that. But I'm just gonna go ahead and specify a depth of five just to make sure that it catches any nested resources. So let's go ahead and select this and hit F8 to run it again. And as you can see, we now get the expected JSON result from PowerShell. We now have the access control equals private property on our properties property. So let's go ahead and deploy this to a new CloudFormation stack called Trevor Test 2. So because I already have the CFN template as a global variable, I can just select this one line and hit F8. And it says unsupported structure. So why is that? And we also need to make sure that we convert this to JSON with a depth of five. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit F8 to run that. And as you can see, it passed validation and we have a new CloudFormation stack. So that's basically how you convert an object to JSON in PowerShell. Now we're going to switch gears and talk about converting from JSON and how you can manipulate an object after the fact using PowerShell's adaptive type system. So let's go ahead and create a new document here, set our language to PowerShell so that we get syntax highlighting and IntelliSense and all that fun stuff. And now we're gonna talk about how to actually take JSON and convert it to a PowerShell object that we can then manipulate. So as you can see, we just deployed a CloudFormation stack called Trevor Test 2. So let's go back and retrieve that template. So we're going to call get CFN template, specify the stack name of Trevor Test 2, and of course the AWS region, which is US West 2 in this case. So this command is just going to return our JSON, and we'll go ahead and store that inside of a variable. So now we have a variable called template body that contains the string containing our JSON of our CloudFormation template that we successfully deployed at some point in the past. So what we're going to do is take template body, and then we're going to call, call convert from JSON. And then we'll store that as template object. So now we've got this variable, template object. You can ignore the squiggly line there, which just means that we haven't used this variable that we just defined anywhere in the script. It's just a simple warning. But if we take template object and hit F8 on that, you can see that we have this object with a property of resources. And then if we dig into the resources property, we have a properties and type property. So we can simply request the type property Actually, I'm sorry, uh, my S3 bucket. And then if we take a look at my S3 bucket, now we have the type property. And then we also have the properties property. And that has an access control property. So we can basically drill into that object as deep as we want to. So what if we want to add something to this template object? Well, what we can do is basically just reference that object and pipe it into what's called the add member command. So let's say that, for example, we want to add the comments field in CloudFormation to this particular object and then deploy it to a new CloudFormation stack so that we have that comment property embedded in it. 
The add member command is going to allow us to do that. So we'll specify the add member command member type note property. And then we'll specify the name of the property that we want to add, which is actually description, not comment. And then the value that we want to add. So let's just call the value. This is a test template for cloud formation. And then we'll call the pass, we'll add the pass through parameter, which is going to return the modified object. And we're going to assign that back to itself. So we're basically going to take the object that we got directly from converting the JSON to an object. We're going to append a new property to that object and then pass it through and then reassign it to itself. So let's go ahead and hit F8 on this line. And we'll now inspect our modified object. As you can see, we now have this description field or description property that's associated with our object. So what we can do is deploy a new CloudFormation stack to the US West 2 region. Let's give it a stack name of Trevor Test 3. And the body, the template body, is going to be convert to JSON input object template object, and then a depth of six just to be safe. So if we hit F8, you can see that we've now successfully deployed a new CloudFormation stack. If we call get CFN template against that new stack, you can now see that we get back the modified JSON object where we appended the description property using PowerShell. So that's pretty much all there is to know about converting to and from JSON. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please leave a thumbs up and a comment with any feedback on future videos. Thanks for watching!